In the grand tapestry of culinary establishments, there exists a peculiar temple of mundanity, a place where Friday is not merely a day, but a state of mind, eternally trapped in a garish limbo of its own making. I speak, of course, of that distinctly American phenomenon, TGI Fridays. The name itself, reeking of a forced joviality, is a testament to the cultural bankruptcy of the enterprise. Thank God it's Friday, they exclaim with an almost evangelical fervor, as if the mere arrival of the week's end could absolve the sins of mediocre cuisine and the banality of mass-produced joy. One is immediately reminded of Huxley's Brave New World, where Soma numbed the masses to their dreary existence. TGI Fridays offers a similar escape, not through pharmaceuticals, but through deep-fried appetizers and overwrought cocktails. As one steps into this gaudy sanctum, one is assaulted by an aesthetic that can only be described as the love child of a carnival and a yard sale. The walls, cluttered with what can generously be termed Americana, represent a haphazard journey through a kitsch-laden history, each artifact vying for attention and none receiving it. Here, a guitar once strummed by a musician whose name escapes memory. There, a road sign inexplicably indoors, pointing the way to nowhere. The menu, a tome rivaling war and peace in length but not in content, offers a gastronomic journey through the depths of culinary despair. The Jack Daniels glazed ribs, slathered in a sauce as cloying as it is ubiquitous, stand as a monument to the unholy alliance between fast food and liquor branding. The buffalo wings, a dish that has spread its wings far beyond the confines of its New York namesake, arrive at the table as if on a flight of Icarian ambition, only to plummet into the sea of mediocrity. But it is not just the food that evokes such a visceral reaction. The very ethos of TGI Fridays speaks to a deeper malaise in American culture, the relentless pursuit of cheerfulness and the collective delusion that it can be packaged and sold. This is the bread and circuses of our age, a spectacle designed to distract from the ennui of modern life. The Romans had their gladiatorial games, we have our endless appetizers. In a world increasingly devoid of authentic experiences, TGI Fridays stands as a beacon of artificiality. It is a place where one can don the mask of merriment, raise a glass of an overly sweetened margarita, and toast to the end of another week. Yet, as the ice clinks in the shallow depths of that garish goblet, one cannot help but feel a sense of loss. For the time that could have been spent in a more enriching pursuit, for the conversations drowned out by the cacophony of forced festivity, and for the palates numbed by the assault of flavors as loud and as empty as the decor. In conclusion, TGI Fridays is less a restaurant and more a symptom, a manifestation of a culture that has lost its way, mistaking the garish for the grand, the boisterous for the beautiful. As we wander through its neon-lit halls, we would do well to remember the words of T.S. Eliot. We are the hollow men, we are the stuffed men leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. In the kingdom of the bland, TGI Fridays is king, and we, its willing subjects, are left to ponder the Fridays of our discontent.